Today, in this video, we'll discuss about acetaminophen toxicity. Acetaminophen is the most widely used analgesic antipyretic in the United States. It's found in many over-the-counter medications as well as in the prescription medications. It's a safe drug if you used up to 4000 milligrams every 24 hours. However, overdose can lead to fatal and non-fatal hepatic necrosis. Even the repeated therapeutic or slightly excessive doses uh, can be hepatotoxic in susceptible individuals like uh, those patients with the history of alcohol intake or any other chronic liver diseases. So now talking about epidemiology, it is one of the most commonly reported uh, products causing DILI and it is the second most common cause of liver transplantation worldwide and it is most common cause of liver transplantation in the United States. It's responsible for about 56,000 emergency department visits, 2,600 hospitalizations, and 500 deaths per year in the United States. And uh, almost 50% of the poisoning are because of the unintentional overdoses. Acetaminophen causes a dose-related centrilobular hepatic necrosis, as shown in this picture. 8 gram per day, twice the daily recommended maximum dose over several days, uh, can lead to the liver failure and if a patient takes more than 25 grams then that can cause the fulminant disease so toxicity is very unlikely if the patient has uh, consumed from 7.5 to 10 grams uh, it's likely if the dose is above 12 grams and virtually all the patients who ingest more than 350 milligrams per kg they develop uh, severe liver toxicity unless appropriately treated and the peak serum concentrations are usually reached within the four hours of ingestion and elimination half-life it ranges from two to four hours acetaminophen is uh, metabolized by the hepatic microsomes so normally uh, if patient if patient is taking paracetamol or acetaminophen in the therapeutic doses 90 percent of the acetaminophen is metabolized in the liver uh, to the sulfate conjugates or the glucuronide conjugates which are excreted in the urine. Half of the remaining acetaminophen is then excreted unchanged in the urine and half is uh, metabolized by hepatic cytochrome P450 enzymes into the toxic compound NAPQ. And this compound uh, in a normal condition is uh, conjugated immediately with the glutathione uh, that leads to the formation of the uh, non-toxic uh, compounds like uh, cysteine and mercaptate compounds that are excreted in the urine whereas uh, with toxic doses the sulfate and the glucuronide pathway is saturated and the large amount of the paracetamol is uh, metabolized by the cytochrome p450 pathway leading to the production of the excessive amount of the NAPQ production and uh, when these glutathione reserves are depleted, this uh, toxic compound NAPQ accumulates in the body, leading to the hepatic injury. So there are certain factors that uh, potentiate the hepatic injury, and some of them include the excessive intake of the PCM. This is the most important. Larger the dose, more uh, higher the risk of hepatic injury. Moreover, the delay in the presentation to the emergency department or to the hospital and the delay between the ingestion and the acetylcysteine uh, therapy is the next major factor responsible for uh, causing the hepatic injury. Other than that, excessive cytochrome P450 activity, decreased capacity of glucuronidation or sulfation, depletion of the glutathione stores, and the prior administration of the alcohol, phenobarbital, and other drugs uh, can also lead to the hepatic injury. Similarly, the starvation increases the risk of the hepatic injury and similarly the other comorbid illnesses, advancing age and the genetic makeup and the nutritional status also play important role in deciding whether the patient will develop hepatic injury or not. So clinical manifestations uh, initially are mild and non-specific and this is, uh, clinical course is often divided into the four sequential stages. Stage 1 from 0.5 to 24 hours, stage 2 from 24 to 72 hours, stage 3, and stage 4 from 4 day to 2 weeks. So stage 1, which occurs from 0.5 to 24 hours, uh, is characterized by the nausea, vomiting, diaphoresis, 
and the non-specific symptoms like malaise and lethargy. Some patients may even be asymptomatic at this period of time and the laboratory studies are usually normal. And the next stage starts from the 24 to 72 hours and uh, by this time this stage 1 symptoms they resolve and the patient starts to develop the hepatotoxicity and the nephrotoxicity. There can be right upper quadrant pain, liver enlargement and tenderness. Uh, there is there will be elevation of the amyotransferases and uh, there can be the elevation of the prothrombin time, INR. Patient can develop oliguria or the abnormalities of the renal function. Similarly, there can be the elevation of the serum amylase with or without clinical pancreatitis. Uh, after 72 hours, the uh, patient uh, starts to develop the features of the uh, third stage, which includes the uh, elevation of the liver enzymes, uh, which can increase up to the extent of more than 10,000 in unit per liter. There can be recurrence of the stage 1 symptoms. Patient uh, will have symptoms of jaundice, hepatic encephalopathy, hyperammonemia. There can be the bleeding diastasis because of the coagulopathy. Patient can have hypoglycemia and lactic acidosis. There can be the renal failure and death usually occurs uh, in this stage. So this is the most, no, stage three is the stage where death mostly occurs. And if patient survives this stage three, they will uh, enter the, the stage four, which starts from day four to 14. And this is the recovery phase. And gradually the symptom, uh, symptoms and the laboratory values uh, slowly start to recover and the histologic recovery is relaxed behind the clinical recovery and may take up to three months. Differential diagnosis is broad. It might include alcohol-related hepatitis, other drugs or toxin-induced hepatitis, viral hepatitis, any other hepatobiliary disease, Ray syndrome, and ischemic hepatitis, also known as shock liver. For the diagnosis, history is very important. We need to ask about the dose ingested intent of the use, whether societal or, or accidental, pattern of the use, whether it was acute ingestion or repeated uh, dosing was there. As well as we need to ask about the time of ingestion, presence of the co-ingestants and the other comorbidities like uh, use of the anti seizure medications or any recent fasting or alcohol use which can potentiate the toxicity. High degree of clinical suspicion is very important. Any patient who presents to the ER with extremely high level of amyotransferase in, uh, in association with the low bilirubin and associated with rising PTINR, in those situations, we need to suspect uh, the possibility of the acetaminophen toxicity. Serum acetaminophen level or serum acetaminophen concentration is a very important test for the diagnosis of the PCM poisoning. So it's a basis for diagnosing uh, PCM acetaminophen poisoning and it is also basis for determining the need for the treatment. So it's measured in every suspected patient and usually it should be done four hours uh, following the time of acute ingestion and if patient presents beyond four hours window it should be done immediately at the time of the presentation and the concentration is evaluated according to the uh, remac matthew nomogram or the revised uh, remac matthew nomogram to determine the need of the acetyl cysteine therapy uh, other than acetaminophen concentration uh, we can do other blood investigations and other investigations including burn creatinine bilirubin, PTINR, liver transaminases label, amylase, urinalysis, uh, ABZ to look for the PH, lactate, uh, which is very important to prognosticate the patient, similarly serum phosphate label, and the toxic screening to rule out other ingested drugs. So now let's discuss about the risk assessment. And the risk assessment is usually done using the uh, revised rheumac Matthew nomogram. So this uh, nomogram helps to derive the chances of possible, probable, and the high-risk hepatotoxicity. Uh, but it's only used in the acute uh, acetaminophen ingestion. The revised uh, rheumac Matthew nomogram is the preferred tool to guide the treatment because of its safety and efficacy. And the 4-hour concentration of 150 mg per liter uh, is an important uh, cut-off value for starting an acetyl cysteine. So the patients with serum acetaminophen concentration above the line connecting 150 microgram per ml at 4 hour and 4.69 microgram per ml at 24 hour are considered at possible risk for hepatotoxicity and treatment with, N with acetyl cysteine is standard in this group of patients. However, if 8 hours have passed since the time of ingestion 
Over the piece, uh, staminophil concentration is expected to result later than eight hours since the time of ingestion. Uh, treatment with acetylcysteine should be initiated empirically while waiting for the laboratory results. Similarly, if the timing of ingestion is unknown or unclear, uh, PCM acetaminophen level should be immediately obtained as well as other investigations should be immediately done. And if the initial concentration is undetectable, less than 10 microgram per ml, and if patient doesn't have any signs and if there is no uh, features of the liver injury, like if AST and ALT is normal, then this acetylcysteine therapy is not indicated. However, uh, if there is any doubt or a patient has any symptoms, signs, or any laboratory values are inconsistent with the history, uh, acetylcysteine therapy should be started. Treatment is basically classified into four aspects of treatment. Like first is supportive care. Next is the prevention of the drug absorption. Third is the administration of the antidotes. And then uh, fourth is the elimination of uh, enhancement of the drug elimination. So supportive care include the airway management, IV fluids, vasopressors for the shock, bicarbonate therapy for the severe metabolic acidosis, use of antiemetics if required, and the hemodialysis if required. So for the prevention of drug absorption, gastric lobates can be done, but it's less effective than the activated charcoal. Activated charcoal or the cholestyramine can be used to prevent the absorption of the residual drug, and it's effective if given within the four hours. And the dose for the activated charcoal is 1 gram per kg. Acetylcysteine is the antidote for the PCM uh, acetaminophen poisoning. And it provides the sulfhydryl donor group to replete the glutathione reserves. Other benefits include the improved uh, hepatic uh, microcirculatory function and oxygen utilization, scavenging of the free radicals and decreased cerebral edema. Acetylcysteine is safe and effective if given early, within 12 hours. Uh, however, it can be used when the injury has evolved. So the indication to start acetylcysteine in acetaminophen poisoning include the serum acetaminophen concentration drawn at 4 to 24 hours after an acute ingestion uh, above the treatment line on revised remap Matthew nomogram. Similarly, if acetaminophen concentration is unavailable or will not return within the 8 hours and if patient, uh, it's suspected that patient has taken more than 7.5 gram of total dose, it's an indication. Similarly, reliable history with uh, repeated supratherapeutic ingestion and the serum acetaminophen concentration more than 20 and uh, AST ALT elevation is also an indication. Similarly, if the history is unreliable and the serum acetaminophen concentration is more than 10 uh, or if AST ALT is elevated, that is also the indication to start the style system. Similarly, if there's any evidence of the acute liver injury with the history of acetaminophen ingestion, style system should be started. Acetyl system can be used via IV road or the oral road. So if oral protocol is followed, loading dose is usually 140 mg per kg over one hour, which is followed by the 70 mg per kg every four hours for 15 to 20 doses. However, this protocol number 2 or 21 hour IV protocol is one of the most commonly used protocol. And in this protocol, initial loading dose of 150 mg per kg IV is given over 60 minutes. And then the next uh, uh, 50 mg per kg is given over the 4 hours. And the uh, then after 4 hours, 100 mg per kg is given over the 16 hours. However, the treatment period can be extended when the patients have large injections or the elevated serum aminotransferases. Sometimes the simplified 20-hour two-pack IV protocol can be used where uh, first uh, 50 mg per kg per hour IV is administered for 4 hours and then over the next 16 hours, the infusion is given at the rate of 6.25 mg per kg per hour. Acetylcysteine can cause non-allergic anaphylactic reactions in some patients as well as it can cause vomiting otherwise uh, most of the patients they usually tolerate acetylcysteine very well so when to stop an uh, acetylcysteine so acetylcysteine can be stopped after a minimum of 300 mg per kg acetylcysteine is uh, given over 20 to 24 hours and if all of the following criteria are met 
So if the serum uh, staminophen concentration is less than 10, INR is less than 2, ST, LTR normal, and if patient is clinically well, we can stop the style cystine infusion. However, if all these criteria are not met, uh, then style cystine should be continued at the rate of 6.25 mg per kg per hour, and patients should be re-evaluated uh, re every 12 hours. And uh, once patient meets all the above mentioned criteria, style cystine can be stopped. So liver transplantation has a very important role in the management of the acetaminophen toxicity and many patients they require liver transplantation and uh, if patient develops the signs of hepatic failure uh, like progressive jaundice, coagulopathy or confusion despite of acetylcysteine therapy that is an indication for the liver transplantation and the early arterial blood lactate of more than 3.5 with ALF suggests the need of liver transplantation. So to identify the patients who require the uh, referral for the liver transplantation, we can use the King's College criteria or the modified King's College criteria. And this picture shows the King's College criteria. And we have a separate video on the King's College criteria for the paracetam uh, paracetamol toxicity. Uh, I'll keep the link in the description. So if uh, arterial pH is seven, less than 7.3, then uh, patient will require the liver transplantation irrespective of the uh, grade of the encephalopathy. However, if arterial pH is not less than 7.3, then patient will need to meet all these three criteria uh, to be referred for the liver transplantation. So this new modified King's College criteria includes the arterial lactate as well. And if uh, arterial lactate is uh, more than 3.5 after the at least uh, initial uh, fluid resuscitation, then it's suggestive of the poor prognosis without liver transplantation. Similarly, if the arterial lactate is more than 3 after adequate fluid resuscitation, it's also suggestive of the poor prognosis without liver transplantation. And if uh, arterial pH is less than 7.3, irrespective of the grade of encephalopathy, that is also suggestive of the a poor prognosis without liver transplantation and patients should be referred for the liver transplantation. However, if arterial pH is not less than 7.3 and if patient meets all these three criteria, which include HE grade 3 or 4, PT more than 100 and serum creatine more than 3.3, then patient should be referred for the liver transplantation. Otherwise, patient should be uh, continued with the acetyl cysteine therapy. If overdose is identified early enough, mortality rates are extremely low and the serious hepatotoxicity is uncommon and death is extremely rare if acetylcysteine is administered within 8 hours following the acetaminophen overdose and before the onset of liver injury. But however, once ALF has developed, mortality is 28% and one third of the patients, they require liver transplantation. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for more videos.